Welcome to the I Ching Cafe. My name is Belinda Dovston, and this is episode six of the I Ching 101 series, How to Cast the I Ching Coins. And so this is a very visual subject, and so I'm going to now move into a layout and take you through the process of how to use the coins. I've spoken in the past, in a previous episode, about the difference of using the app and the coins, its personal preference. Perhaps go and have a look at that if you'd like some more insight. In this episode, we're going to focus on using the coins. There is another method called the Yarrow Sticks, which is outside the scope of my expertise. So coins it is. So let us now move into our layout where I'm going to take you through how to cast the coins. It's really simple and you can then use that at any time you want to ask a question of the I Ching for further insight. So let's start looking at how to cast the coins by getting familiar with our coins. As I've mentioned before, I am familiar with the three coins method, there's the Yarrow Sticks method and many other methods used for the I Ching. I like the coins method and that's what I'm going to work with and share with you today. Okay. The thing about the coins, these are traditional looking I Ching coins uh, with kind of a glyphs on the one side, four glyphs on the one side, two glyphs on the other side. The reality is the, the ritual around the coins is wonderful to work with what looks and feels like I Ching coins. Okay, it creates the feeling in the ritual, but you can of course use any coins <laughs> to work with. You can use your own denomination, whether it's pounds or dollars, or whatever it is, as long as you've got three coins same type of coin um, and you work with them. Create the ritual that you would like to work with around your coins. If it's meaningful to you to have you know coins that look like I Ching coins then go for it but you can work with any coins. Okay your intention and your learning process is what's really important here. So let's have a look at these coins. When you look at the one side you have four glyphs and then when you look at the back side you've got two glyphs. Okay so what I want to do is I want to show you a way of thinking and remembering about these coins to help us unpack and work with casting the coins and working out what our hexagrams are. Okay, so this coin, right, this coin with the four, with the four air glyphs, I call it the busy side, okay, very basic description, is our yang side of our coin, okay, or male energy, okay, also known as heads. This side of the coin is worth three points. Okay. This side of the coin with the two glyphs is our yin or our female side of the coin and that is tails. And that is two points. Okay. So what I'm going to describe to you is a method, a way of making sense of heads and tails and these three points so that we can remember the rationale behind it. It's my way that I have created meaning around this process and maybe it'll help you. Okay, when we think of the head, okay, here's the head of my stick figure, okay, <laughs> all right, the head leads, okay, the tail follows, all right, if this was a, a doggy or a kitty the same would apply, here's the head and here's the, the wagging tail at the end, so the tail follows the head. The same with this energy of male. Male energy lifts and ascends and wants to move and explore and expand. The female energy wants to contract, withdraw, hold and support. Okay, so when we think about heads, the easy way of remembering it, heads is male energy because the head leads and it's three points. Tails follow, female support. Okay, the tail supports the rest of the body. All right tails energy is two points. Okay, so heads and tails, that's the way I make sense of it, and maybe that'll help you. In these numbers, three and two, so here's how I remember it. When we think about two, we think about point A and point B. There's a locked energy when we think about two points connected by a line, okay? It's stable, it's balanced, it's equal, and so that's when I think of two, I think of the energy of two, what makes sense to me, the number two, ties to this idea of the female energy being balanced and in perspective, structured, supportive. When we think of three, and we now draw three lines connected, we have this base energy of two, we've added a third, okay, and now suddenly 
we have energy moving. Okay, we have a triangle that creates a more dynamic flow of energy. There's more action. It's more unstable. It's moving. Okay, and hence the three. Three, right? This idea of a triangle, heads, male energy, movement and energy. Here we have the two, we have a line, okay, a 2D line connected, we have two points, tails, and female energy. All right, so that helps us when we work with the coins, we cast the coins six times, okay, and each time we go, we add up our threes and our twos, depending on how the coins fall, and that's how we build the hexagram. So let's go and have a look at how that works. All right, so let's make a clean page, here we are. Here's our coins, and we're going to ask a question. Now, the thing with the question, and I'll cover this in other episodes in working with the question, there's different ways of viewing the importance and the structure and the framing of the question. I'm not going to get into uh, that for this episode, but what I really like doing is asking a very structured, carefully thought out question and starting the question with, please advise Belinda on whatever it is I'm asking, if I'm asking a personal question, or like we do with our weeklies, please advise each in cafe followers what to focus on for the week commencing. Blah, blah, blah. So I always put myself into the third person uh, and I always use please advise because what we're looking for is we're looking for guidance and wisdom here, right? Okay, so let's say we have asked ourselves a question and now we're going to work with the coins. My little ritual, um, and it's all about creating your own ritual in this process, is I put the coins in my hand, I Ask the question, please advise each in cafe followers what to focus on for the week ahead. And then I blow on the, the coins. <sighs> okay. It's my little ritual of setting the intention of my focus of what I'm going to be covering and then putting that intention into the coins. You know, use your own process that you'd like to do. If you'd like to do a little prayer before, or you'd like to do an affirmation or a meditation, it's entirely up to you. Work with what puts you in the space that you need. Okay. So we've asked ourselves the question, and now what we do is we cast the coins. Now, we don't say throw the coins, okay, you can say throw the coins, but I say cast the coins because there's this, this energy of casting, casting a view, casting the wisdom that has a more powerful uh, meaning to it. So I just kind of go and then let the coins for each of the lines, you know, tell you what's going on. Sometimes they jump out of your hand and they want to just, you know, get onto the table. Sometimes they feel reluctant. So you just go and you follow intuition and when you're ready, you let them fall and here we go. Okay, so our first one, what we do is I always uh, do the, the heads or the yang coins first. Here we have three yang coins, okay, so that's three for male, three for male, three for male. So our first line is a nine, three, six, nine. We add them up and all we're doing is we're putting a number down. If we have a nine or a six, and I'll show you now, we're going to put a little dot next to it. Okay, so just follow along the process as we go. All right, so here's our next line. We're not drawing anything at this stage, we're just drawing up our numbers. Three, six. Ah, oh, here we've got a female coin. That's two, three, six, seven, eight. All right, so we write the eight above. We're casting six times. Our first line is in the bottom, and we're casting up to the top. All right. Let's go again. All right, three, there's a male, four, five, female, six, seven. Three, four, five, six, seven. All right, we write in a seven. Only when there's a six or a nine do we do the dot. Okay, here we go again. Two points, female, two points, female, two points, female, two, four, six. Ah, we've got a six, so we're gonna put a dot. Okay, two more to go. All right, here, three points male, three points male, two points female, three, six, seven, eight. Oh, I'm glad we've got all four types of lines so we can see the whole process happening. Okay, last time, oh, there they go. Jumping out, three for a male, three for a male, two for a female, three, six, seven, eight. All right, so we can put our signs. So there we have, we have our main hexagram. It looks like a whole lot of numbers in a, in a column. But let's start drawing in the lines where we have a seven or a nine. We have a male yang line, okay, also known as an unbroken line. And when we have a six 
or an eight, we have a female line, also known as a broken line. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw in whether we have a male line or a female line, a yang or a yin. Right, nine is yang, eight is yin, seven is yang, six is yin, eight is yin, eight is yin. Okay, so here we have our lines drawn up, the six and the nine, we've made dots next to them, what does it mean? Because when we have a six or we have a nine, we have what is called a changing line. So if you've been watching the weeklies and the monthlies, you will know what that means. Changing line it means a specific pop of change that is wanting to come and support us. And in the next episode of the Itching 101 series, I'm going to talk more about what these changing lines mean. Okay, so here we have a six and a nine. So those two are changing lines. This one is in the first position. Remember, we count from the bottom up. Okay, so this one is in the first position, position one. One, two, three, four. This changing line is in the fourth position. Okay, so this is the notation of how I work, and I've left myself not much too much space yet. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to draw our second relating outcome hexagram. Because we have two changing lines, these two changing lines want to change into their opposite. So we redraw, because this is the present, or the main energy. And what we're going to do next is we're going to draw the outcome here, squished against the side, or the relating energy. Okay, so they work together, not one or the other, it's together. So what we're doing is you're basically taking any line that's a changing line and changing it into its opposite, copying the others across and building a new hexagram. So here our first line is a changing line. So we turn it in from a male to a female. This one stays, okay, it's not a changing line. This one stays, not a changing line. This one does change, there we go. It changes from a female to a male. This one is not changing, it stays, and this one stays. Okay, so here we have our main hexagram and our relating outcome hexagram. There are a whole lot of other pieces of data we can unpack as part of this, but let's keep it simple for now. You've cast the coins, you've built up your main hexagram, and you have got your outcome relating hexagram. So let's have a look now at how you would work with looking these hexagrams up in your book. So I've got Richard Wilhelm's The I Ching, Book of Changes here. You might have a different book, but most I Ching books have at the back of the book, they have this table. And what this table allows us to do is it allows us to search for what hexagrams we have now cast and redrawn in our outcome. The way we do this is, if you remember from the episode on trigrams, the top three lines is called a trigram, the bottom three lines is a trigram. Same in here, okay, top and bottom. If we look at this trigram at the top, this is earth, all right, and our bottom trigram is fire, okay, all right. And so what we do is we use this table, the top is the top trigram, the side is the bottom trigram. So we go across to earth, all right, there's earth, and we go down until we find fire, boom, 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 here we go, 36, darkening of the light. Okay, oh, we've had this one lots of times on the channel. Okay, here the fire has descended within the earth. Okay, and we have changing lines one and four. Now we look at our outcome hexagram. Our top trigram is thunder, I'm writing over there, and our bottom one is mountain. Okay, so thunder, here we have thunder in the top. We go down until we found mountain. There we have 62 attention to detail. Okay, another famous friend on the channel. We've had that one a lot. Okay, and so that is the process. Now the real challenge begins in interpreting and bringing the whole story together. That's where the real magic of the I Ching lies. This process, anybody can do, right? Reading the book, anybody can do. Pulling it all together and finding a meaning and a story that you can work with. Working with really unpacking and meditating on the symbols coming to you really powerful. And that is as complicated as it is. You just need to know the coins, all right, coming back to this picture of the 
Yang, all right, male heads, three points, female tails, two points. Okay, whether you're using normal coins with heads or tails or using Iching coins, you cast six times over, build up your hexagram, and then you're good to go and ready to start working with your interpretation of the I Ching. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the 101 series. If you have not yet done so, perhaps go and watch some of the previous episodes on the I Ching just to help give some context around the things we talk on. And of course, we have the monthly, weekly and special episodes where we work with the I Ching on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. Every time I'm asking the same question, please advise I Ching Cafe followers what to focus on for the month ahead, for the week ahead. It's all about focus. And as always, trust your life. Trust that whatever flows of change you're going through, they are needing your attention, even if it's not quite the flow of change that we are going through on the channel on a week by week and month by month basis. Thank you so much. Please subscribe, like, and share. It would be great to have you on the channel on a regular. And of course, there is the podcast version. If you love podcasts as I do, it would be great to have you there as well. Thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you soon.